to develop meets and bounds or some system of defining these, because especially on small lots, uh, the sort of constriction that that envelope forms is more of a significant aspect of the design of a house. Or should we uh, sort of wait and see what happens further down the road? At this point in time, I don't believe our ordinance includes provisions for meets and bounds and surveyed building windows. But we do need information establishing where they are somehow or other. Other members of the board? Good ideas on how to do it? Anybody looking this way? Yes. Um, <laughs> I, think, I think the... the, uh, the the first step is to be sure that the dimensions are, are shown to the uh, building setback requirements as, as required by the ordinance and then have a confirmation from the applicant as to what they want to uh, clear beyond that, if anything. Uh -huh. And I guess I would also ask the town planner at the same time if there's anything within the ordinance that uh, restricts the percentage of lot that can be cleared. Um. These are grandfathered lots, but I, I, I'd have to check. There might be a maximum clearing because of their, they're under the old standards. Um, under uh, typical RC district lots today, there, there is no maximum clearing. You can clear the entire lot. With even uh, beyond the building setback? Yes. You can clear right to the lot line. The only thing that restricts that is when the, the planning board establishes building envelopes and limits activity outside the envelope. So, you, you know, the, the point you brought up about actually fixing these, lo these building envelopes, and these are more regular than the situation we dealt with at the beginning of these this evening. Uh, but the other issue is to actually state what kind of activities are allowed outside the building envelope. And this has been a discussion of the board in the past. I, I remember we mm -hmm. talked about defining building envelopes and limiting activities, and there was uh, a real sentiment that people should be allowed to landscape as they see fit on their property. Um, so this is something that uh, one, uh, you know, the board should discuss and, and I think the applicant's looking for as much direction as possible so that they can come back and um, get some final plans that uh, most of you are happy with. Well, I, I noticed that, uh, in, you know, in the past we've, uh, def we've included uh, septic systems that needing to fall within the building envelope. Uh, but have never gone as far as saying the building envelope represents a, a sort of drop dead, no cut, no fill buffer. You're allowed to <coughs> gardens and blend contours uh, as is shown in many of the representative grading schemes developed for these small lots. And uh, having the ability to blend grades uh, outside of the building envelope is really critical to fitting up even a multi-level house that conforms to the landscape into such a small lot. So, uh, but I think uh, I agree with Tom. Uh, someplace the sort of uh, where the lines are parallel to the lot lines, the dimension that is set back should be shown on the plans. Uh, but then beyond that, uh, there are a lot of places where, uh, you know, diagonals slice through or curves representing setbacks from wetlands occur. And uh, should we uh, ask the applicant to do something that approximate approximates where those are somehow or other with, with numbers. <coughs> Mr. McNichols. Uh, two concerns I have. Uh, one I'm not prepared to uh, see resolved here tonight is the, uh, is the traffic problem. I think it's an extremely <coughs> a serious issue. I live just a short distance down uh, Mitchell Road in another development. And I, while I'm not sure, because I wasn't on the board at the time, I think that when Manta Road was a grandfathered access to Mitchell Road from the development I live in, and yet the, uh, I'm, my wife's had an accident at that intersection. I've nearly been involved on two occasions. So the last thing we need are any more intersections, dangerous intersections in this area. I'm going to look at that with a very jaundiced eye. I want to make sure that this, we're not creating a safety problem. Uh, the second point I would like to address would be to Mr. Laurie. Uh, this is an area of law that I've never specialized in. I'm new to it. And I would ask that in any response to the town attorney's 
uh, letter that we will be receiving in our next session. Any response you care to make, try if possible to get it in to us before that session. And I would also look for any recent citations from the law court. It would be extremely helpful for me. If you could put it in a brief form uh, so that I can uh, uh, do, do some research on the point myself, I would appreciate it. Thank you. Any other members of the board? Mr. Emery? Uh, I had made a particular, I, I think I made the uh, request uh, that the, uh, uh, that the uh, wetland uh, expert come to the meeting this evening. I made that request out of a, purely out of a question that whenever, whenever I get a set of plans and I look at the plans, I try to anticipate if, if I were in a butter or what might become a contentious issue in the review of the plan, as well as for my own satisfaction. And the one thing that, that jumped out at me is that these wetland lines are, are very long and, and relatively very straight, given the <coughs> complexity of the landscape in Cape Elizabeth. So I don't know if uh, Mark will be at the next meeting, but uh, I think we should afford, afford him the opportunity to ad address that question this evening. Come right ahead, Mark. Um, <clears throat> I think the wetland lines that, um, that you're probably referring to are the ones predominantly adjacent to, associated to the stream. Uh, it's the uh, RP1 Sebago Mucky Peat uh, wetland uh, toward the west on the site. Those, uh, those lines, the delineations that were performed, um, are as a result uh, quite extensively of the abrupt nature of the topography breaking at those points. Uh, we do have the steep slopes or the, or, or the slopes coming off of the ridge, the bedrock coming down, and then immediately flattening out um, either through a drainage ditch or into a flattened out into the wetland areas. Um, this generally when we'll see straight lines is in this, in this type of uh, topography. Uh, the times that we see a more undulating or a much fingered like wetland uh, would be similar to the wetlands found on the south side of the project where topography is relatively flat or relatively the same over the entire area. So the water is seeking different areas of elevation, different air elevation differences and finding pockets or fingers. Uh, but when we have steep slopes that come down uh, abruptly to a wetland, uh, those lines um, are very linear uh, in most cases. Can I just have a, a follow-up question? I'm not, uh, I'm not trying to be contentious here. I was just concerned that this might be something that the abutters might jump on, and I just wanted to be sure that everyone understood how the wetlands uh, were flagged or, or mapped. If, if, if you go to the uh, soils map, and, and I'm not going to pick on any specific soils, but the soils uh, lines tend to be quite irregular. Uh, and sometimes they follow the topography, sometimes they don't. I mean, it's purely a mystery to me how you guys map soils. I think it's just uh, incredible. And then if I look at the topography in the area that the, uh, where you've mapped, uh, certainly there's a steep slope, but at the base of that slope, there's, there's undulation in the 76 contour, 74 contour, and then up toward the western end of it, uh, there appears to be a, a deeper swale. Is there, is there another layer of information here that there's a certain uh, limited number of flags that have been placed here that, that connect these longer lines? Uh, no, that is not, not appropriate. Um, the delineation that was performed, uh, as in all delineations that I perform, it's, it's very important, obviously, to outline and detail the wetlands to the greatest extent practicable. Um, the points are suggested, the points are located really based upon changes in the wetlands. Um, obviously, when we look at wetlands, we're looking at three parameters as, as prescribed to us under the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers 1987 Wetlands uh, Delineation Manual. So we're looking at vegetation, hydrology, and soils. Um, unfortunately, topo you know, topography comes into that a little bit in the hydrology. Um, but the wetlands, uh, we must have three positive indicators of all three of those parameters. And those really dictate where the points and where the lines are drawn in the field. Okay. Thank you very much, Mark. You're welcome.
Any other comments before we vote on a motion? And I ask that a motion be presented. Mr. Emery? If I can get to it. A uh, motion for the board to consider be it ordered that based on the plans and materials submitted and the facts presented, the application of Fitzpatrick Associates for subdivision amendments, a resource protection permit, and a private access <coughs> way permit for the previously approved Hemlock Hill subdivision located at the end of Hemlock Hill Road and Woodcrest Road be tabled to the regular April 20th, 1999 meeting of the planning board. <coughs> Second. Second by Mr. Parkhurst. Any further discussion? Hearing none, those in favor, raise your right hand, please. Passes unanimously. Thank you very much. The last item on this evening's agenda is the Sprague Master Subdivision Plan. One. The applicant may begin whenever you want, just uh, addressing the changes that are left. Mr. Chairman, <coughs> I'll recuse myself. Goodbye. <laughs> no, I'm not going to leave. I'll be back. Good evening. I'm Amy Bell Siegel, a landscape architect with Terrence Dewan Associates. With me tonight is Seth Sprague and John Green from the Sprague Corporation with what we hope is a successful last appearance before you. Um, as we stated in our letter from the 26th of February, uh, Seth and John met with town staff on February 24th to review all the remaining issues that were brought up at the last board meeting, as well as issues that have been raised by the staff. Um, in response, we have submitted a revised phasing plan, which includes one additional phase, phase seven, which, is, which reflects the first section of Fieldways Lane right there. Um, we have revised the phasing schedule in the lower left to show the effects of that change. Mm -hmm. There is now a total of 21 phases. We have uh, submitted a reworked letter of credit with a revised unit cost breakdown for phase one in <coughs> response to comments from the town manager, town attorney, and town engineer. We have revised the language for the condition of approval um, reflecting a compromise between the town and the corporation. We have also submitted a revised fire protection plan, which, uh, with a new note addressing the need for the access roads for, uh, for Richard Tucker Pond, Trout Pond, and Green Pond to be completed or, and improved when the pond itself is being improved. And related, lastly, we have submitted a draft of the agreement that addresses the town manager's concerns about the performance guarantee issues regarding the fire pond and access road improvements. So, 
Seth and John would be happy to answer any questions you may have. And otherwise, uh, that would be it. Thank you. Questions from the board members? Mr. McNichols. The only question I have of Mr. Sprague, how many times now does this, has this been before the board, Mr. Sprague? I admire your perseverance. We're, we're almost there. You're almost there, okay. <clears throat> We'll give the board a minute just to read through the information submitted one final time. <clears throat> a point of clarification, if I could. Mr. Parkhurst. In number five, just prior on you know, page number two, um, it says no sale of a lot to the public can occur without a review of the subdivision amendment. So it might take, do I take this to mean that if there is a particular family member that has a piece of land that they want to sell to the public. And I don't want to point to anyone in particular, but <clears throat> does this say that if then, that only that area needs to be looked at? That's the way it reads to me. Um, on page two, number five. The top of the page. Okay, that, that would be an error in the way I've described it then. The, the important thing to look at would be look at page three, number four. four. That's right. Um, the intent of this, this has been a major <coughs> issue of discussion between town staff and the applicant. Uh, the applicant has uh, graciously agreed to uh, allow the board to do what it normally does whenever a subdivision is amended. That is that you get to look at the entire subdivision and anything that is related to the proposed amendment. Thank you. Nancy, you had your hand up? <clears throat> no, I just, I just want to congratulate you. I think you're going to be through tonight, and we're really going to miss you. <laughs> <laughs> Speak for yourself. It's, it's nothing personal, but you really clear out the room every time this issue comes up. <laughs> Mr. Griffin. Question uh, regarding that the town engineer, Maureen, about the review of the plans. Is there a time frame? That, is there anything? That I think the time frame is that uh, when this <coughs> board votes to approve this subdivision plan, the applicant has 90 days to get it recorded or your approval expires. Uh, the applicant has the opportunity within that 90 days to ask the board to extend for another 90 days. So the applicant has an opportunity of 180 days from, say, this evening to get this plat recorded. Uh, the way that the approval has been proposed to the board this evening means that all of the conditions that are on, on, on the approval would have to be met before the plat could be recorded. That means that there's a real incentive on the part of the applicant to get those plans finalized as soon as possible, get them to the town engineer so he can review them. <coughs> and the assumption is that there will be no issues. The <coughs> attorney will be able to review them. Perhaps there might be a few minor things that need to be changed, but all the understandings are, <coughs> are, are unanimous. Uh, my assumption also is that if the town engineer receives those plans and there's something on those plans which he does not believe is what was the agreement between the board and, and the, the applicant. And the applicant also disagrees that that's not the way it was going to be. Um, we would bring it back to the board. Uh, but this is a very large project, and, and I think the board tried to accommodate the applicant and not having to bring in large amounts of plans every month, which I personally am happy with not having to distribute. Uh, but that means that we have this last final set of plans, and the expectation is that those would be prepared um, expeditiously because the, the applicant needs to record this plat. <clears throat> Mr. Wilcox. Oh, uh, I'm sorry. Mr. Packers. <clears throat> what on the question? Uh, it's my understanding that the, the corporation cannot lease uh, any of their property for more than a one year period of time to anyone outside the family. Then in the, in, in, correct me if I'm wrong, but then in tonight's um, 
packet, one of the conditions of approval um, was sort of changing that and saying, or at least for a term of greater than five years uh, to anyone other than the family members. Um, am I mistaken in my what I had heard before or not? So why the change? We, um, when we met with staff, um, we made a comment that we do lease to uh, Billy Jordan, for example, a local farmer, and some of those lease, agricultural leases we wanted to uh, squeeze into the same time frame uh, in the conditions. So we felt it would be appropriate to allow some of our land leases to fit that time frame so that we're um, not, you know, not uh, we would in fact then be complying with the subject. In other words, they're, they're leasing farm fields for five years at a time. Yeah, okay, and, I understand and, that right. part, but and, I was under the we, understanding they yeah. couldn't do that. Their yes, in, internally, um, our, our own leases and, and our own internal agreements, our shareholder agreements and such, only allow the lease of structures uh, to a third party for a year at a time. Um, this is only to allow the accommodation of a, an agricultural lease. Okay. It's not, it does not change the uh, format we have internally. Mr. Wilcox? I just wanted to make, make the comment that uh, I've been very pleased to see uh, sort of all the I's dotted and the T's crossed at this point in time with this uh, sort of intricate development of phasing. <coughs> and I would be prepared to offer a motion. Uh, if you have a long no wind, further, go right ahead. No further uh, questions or discussion from the board they want to Go right ahead, Mr. Wolf. Go ahead with it. Otherwise, sort of like my last duty as outgoing chair. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to offer the following motion for the board to consider. Findings of fact. One, the Sprague Corporation is requesting final subdivision review, a resource protection permit, and four private access way permits for a 62 lot subdiv subdivision located south of Bowery Beach Road. Two, the subdivision ordinance requires that a performance guarantee be provided in order to assure that improvements will be constructed according to the approved plans. Three, in order to eliminate the need to make copies of interim plan sets, the planning board has agreed to allow the applicant to provide a set of plan and profile sheets reflecting the project design approved by the planning board after planning board approval. Four. The fire protection improvements are necessary to allow town public safety personnel to respond to emergencies on the site, but are not part of the performance guarantee requirement. Five, in response to the applicant's representation that the subdivision lots are intended for family members and will not be sold to the public, the planning board has granted waivers from town standards, including but not limited to road standards, affordable housing and open space standards. Six, the application substantially complies with the requirements of section 16-2-4 of the subdivision ordinance, section 19-8-3 resource protection permit regulations, and section 19-7-9.D private access way permit. Therefore, be it ordered that, based on the plans and materials submitted and the facts presented, the application of the Sprague Corporation for final subdivision review, a resource protection permit, and four private access way permits for a 62 lot subdivision located south of Bowery Beach Road be approved, subject to the following conditions. One, that a signed performance guarantee for phase one in a format approved by the town attorney and in an amount approved by the town engineer and town manager be submitted by the applicant. No subdivision improvements shall commence within a phase prior to the submission by the applicants of a performance guarantee acceptable to the town. Two, that the applicant submit final construction drawings to the town engineer for review and approval. A copy of the final approved drawings shall also be provided to the town planner. Three, that the applicant submit a signed contract agreeing to construct the fire protection improvements in a form acceptable to the town manager. Four, 
The Sprague Family Land Use Plan, dated March 16, 1999, the amended plan, is an amendment to the approved Sprague Corporation Division of Land dated December 29, 1982 and recorded in the Cumberland County Registry of Deeds on July 25, 1983 in Plan Book 138, pages 64 through 67. The amended plan is approved subject to the following conditions. A, in the event the Sprague Corporation is liquidated, the property described in the amended plan, the property, will be distributed to stockholders of its parent corporation, Black Point Corporation. Black Point Corporation stockholders are either issue of P. Shaw Sprague or entities solely for the benefit of issue of P. Shaw Sprague. These two stockholder groups are referred to here as family members. Before liquidation, the Sprague Corporation shall complete the improvements to <coughs> Little Pond Lane, Breakwater Farm Road, Ram Island Farm Road, Japanese Pond Road, and Monastery Road, all as shown on the various plan and profile sheets for these roads on the amended plan, and complete all the fire protection improvements described on sheet four, fire protection plan of the amended plan. B, the planning board of the town of Cape Elizabeth has waived, among other things, certain road standards, open space standards, and affordable housing standards in consideration of the applicant's representation that the property will be held by family members. Therefore, if any of the property, including land and buildings, on the amended plan is sold or otherwise conveyed, excluding any mortgage, or leased for a term of greater than five years to anyone other than family members, then the planning board shall review the entire subdivision and review all subdivision standards which may be impacted by the change in ownership. C, any application to the town of Cape Elizabeth by the Sprague Corporation, its successors or assigns concerning the use of its remaining land which is not the <coughs> subject of the amended plan will not cause a review of the amended plan. And finally, five, that there be no alteration of the site nor issuance of a building permit nor <coughs> recording of the plat until the above conditions have been met. Second. Seconded by Mr. Parkhurst. Any further discussion? Hearing none, those in favor, please raise your right hand. Motion passes unanimously. Mr. Sprague, as the chair of the board, I think we're remiss in not having a plaque ready to present to you. Or <laughs> champagne. Uh, the fact that you and your staff, Terry Dewan Associates, property manager, Mr. Green, uh, I'm, I remember once I asked you if your family members were still speaking to you, and you said you had been successful in that front, and uh, I think that's amazing. <laughs> But uh, I thank you for your patience. By my count, it's been a little bit more than a year and three months in the application process alone, and I'm sure you and your associates have been working longer than that. Considering that this land encompasses more than 20% of the land area of Cape Elizabeth, I thank you. Uh, I think as people drive through your family's holdings on Route 77 and Fowler Road and throughout town, that at least from the sight of the windshield of their car, it will remain as it is now, and I thank you for that. Do I have a motion to adjourn? Oh, I yes, Mrs. Sprague, right ahead. I uh, express my gratitude to the board as well for uh, hanging in there through uh, a complicated process. And we are uh, a little bit of an unusual applicant, but we appreciate all your efforts. And uh, my family thanks you as well. <clears throat> Any further comments from the board? <clears throat> I move to adjourn. Mr. Parker, moves to adjourn. Mr. McNichols seconds. All those in favor? Thank you. Let the record show that I came back to the meeting before the adjournment. <laughs>